right from the start and insist that it happens that way then we're going to have some problems down the road and you'll be putting out fires there and here and putting plasters and sores and the things will not change our position stands the ministry of education must meet with tutor first not to get permission but the education act section 74e and i'll take that into section 63 of the education act says the ministry the employer has a responsibility to meet with the union to discuss matters affecting the members and affecting the curriculum delivery and education the law is not asking the law is telling and so what we've seen time and time again over the years even before my tenure is different incarnations of the ministry trying to bypass that and choose how to come back and put down a buff a quiet buff or a hard buff but you have to come back and say listen you must meet with us first because we float a document called guidelines for reopening in september out in the public domain we stir up public you know interest agitation and then you have a meeting with tutor to do what to say what to have what accomplished so we have to say yeah, our position is we need to consult with our members our members who are educators our members who are parents we need to ensure that we have the perspectives of education practitioners of students on board and then we will say listen this is what should work this is not what will not work we will not as tutor stand by and say listen due to the situations caused by COVID-19 we want to we will allow a compromise on this particular issue that affects the terms and conditions of education professionals now I want to jump in and say this from the time people hear tutor talk or people hear unions talk they think the only thing we talk about is salary and money I want to remind us yes many of us are, are living on a tight budget right now and that includes education professionals who've not had the salary increase since 2014 and who've been using their own electricity their own internet their own devices disrupting their work-life balance utilizing their money to do photocopies and printing for the sake of our children to support the system we should not now be looking to demonize educators because we are saying let's get this thing right not only for educators but for the children right when you have a system where you are not sure how you're going to conduct assessments then we have a challenge any education practitioner will tell whose word his salt or her salt will tell you assessment comes as part of your planning process you must know how you're going to do it if you say we are going to do a blended approach a hybrid approach some here today some here tomorrow some home today some home tomorrow can our schools the physical spaces accommodate that what does that mean for the hours of work of our education professionals from school supervisors to principals to everybody what does that mean for their work-life balance and their health what does that mean for the resources that they have to utilize and their children these are the things that we need to consult and have discussions on first with our membership and the ministry of education has to we're not asking it they have to take it on board as I, as you've heard in the clip we can't please everybody we're not going to try to but what we will try to do as tutor is ensure that our children are not disenfranchised that our children receive the best quality public education that our educators can offer and that we as educators can hold our heads high as professionals and say, I am an educator in Trinidad and Tobago. I feel valued, I feel respected. That's what we're looking at right now. And so transitioning Dr. Tiwari comes back to the paradigm shift in terms of how we see education and education professionals. Okay, I, 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 I get the impression that you, that you think that um, the, the ministry's approach has been too high-handed and to some extent disrespectful and you feel that there has not been enough consultation or thought gone into this uh, with the people who ha actually have to deliver education and but i also get the sense that you feel that look our education system wasn't that great 
before COVID. Now that we have an opportunity to reposition the education system, to revamp the education system, to rethink the education system as we open in September, maybe we shouldn't just go with trying to fix a few little things here and there. Let us be a little more thorough in the way we approach this. Am I correct or can you correct me by what you say? Correct, no, correct analysis, Dr. Tulari, because you see, when we talk public policy, you will well know, we talk from formulation to implementation. And many times we see our public policy, good ideas, and we fall down at the implementation stage. Sure. We made this point as tutor to the division yesterday. Let us determine what our short, medium, and long-term goals are, even if we had a strategic plan before. Things have had to be adjusted due to COVID. Change it. Yes. Yes. Well, this is it. Allow me to draw reference to two particular scenarios. One is a CARICOM initiative. Trinidad and Tobago was a major player in CARICOM. CARICOM and OS, OECS, we have what we call a learning recovery plan. It's available for perusal online. And basically, it's a framework being suggested for countries to use to mitigate learning loss, to help to rebuild the system, to help to reach those students who may have dropped off or who may have not been reached properly during the pandemic period. That framework should have been utilized or, or been the context for our guidelines. Yes. It's not been. It's not even factored no, in anywhere. But we point. want principals to do this. We want supervisors to do this. We must look at what the scenario is and what information is presenting itself to build that policy for implementation. Okay. I, I mean, I hear you clearly. Yeah? Um, you are saying really COVID has, has caused a learning loss for the mass of a, a young population in the school system. And we cannot simply open schools in September and do like if we are continuing the process. I mean, just like for businesses, right. you've, just like for businesses, you've had a lot of losses. They've had to close down. They now have to recoup. They have to reorganize. They have to rethink. Um, you also have to do that in education, and this is such an important That's thing. True. But let me let me ask you this. I mean, I get the impression that you're saying, look. We are prepared to find a resolution for this in the interest of our students because that's our primary interest. But you have to understand that we are teaching teachers and uh, teaching and learning professionals and we have a mind and we have a view as to how this should be done. Don't come as the Ministry of Education and tell us to do this as if we are mindless people in the system. And even if we don't agree with it, we have to go along. I mean, am I getting you straight? You are absolutely correct. And unfortunately, it may very well be how a number of entities, both locally and um, outside of Trinidad and Tobago, they view trade unions as a whole. When you look at the countries that have started the recovery process and have been successful after COVID, Malaysia and other countries, what do they have in common? Meaningful social dialogue. So you have tripartism taking place and playing out in the truest sense of the word. Partnership and collaboration and agreement by or amongst the government, the state, the trade union movement, and the corporate entities in the country. Now, that will take us into another realm of, of the, the tripartite arrangement we had in Trinidad and so forth and so on. Suffice it to say, Trinidad and Tobago is a unionized environment. Try as some of our employers might, our environments are unionized. Our trade unions are recognized and respected under the law as a tutor, and therefore, if we are to go forward, consultation must be sought, 
cooperation must be sought for more trade unions, not a high-handed approach. And TUSA is no different in that regard. You see, okay. Dr. Tiwari, look at this scenario. We saw the clip with the children wearing their masks and the signs on, on, on the gate, you know, no mask, no entry, etc., etc. We saw the security guard with the, the temperature scandal and so forth. But these are things that have to be discussed. We've, we've had discussions. We have these things in place. These things have to be sustained as part of public health regulations. Where do schools get any money from? How many fundraisers can we have between now and the end of this of the year? Okay. We can't do that. So what? the funding, for example, if you will just allow me to finish, funding yes. is an issue that affects all of us as, as education sector professionals and affects our students. We want the best for our students. Funding has to come not just from the school level where the principal can say, okay, I can spare $300 to buy one more handheld scanner. It also has to come from state investment. So we are seeing investment in the, in the what do you call it, MiFi hotspots and so forth, investment in the purchase and distribution of devices, although that's another story. It can't be calling principals out now during their vacation to give all devices. But is that all? What about school repairs? What about repairs to infrastructure that existed prior to COVID? And of course, the natural deterioration of concrete, wood, and metal. These are things we have to consider, health and safety. So as a union, health and safety is important. And therefore, consultation with the union is important. OK. Um, well, I mean, do you want to see schools open in September? Dr. Tawari, I don't think there's any educator who would not want to see schools open. But where is the school right now? Right now, schools are in educators' homes. And they have been for the last couple of months. And you yourself made it. The school is the institution. So what are we going to do to make a transition from the school being in an educator's home, whatever space they've been able to manage to have their home in, back to a physical space? What about the security issues? What about the health and safety issues? What about the supervision issues? What about the ensuring that schools have the correct complement of teachers to teach particular subjects and to teach particular groups of students? What about ensuring that schools have persons who've been properly appointed as lab technicians and workshop attendants? All of the support staff that we need right. as well. There are a whole slew of things. Will, uh, is, is tutor's position that all teachers should be vaccinated? And what is, what is your are, position on uh, vaccination for opening of schools with children unvaccinated or should they be vaccinated? The Prime Minister says that we may get some Pfizer vaccine that are appropriate for children and from the United States. And if we do that, uh, the Minister of um, Foreign Affairs also said they are in discussion on, on that with the United States. If we got the Pfizer vaccine appropriate for children, would your view be that we should vaccinate all teachers and children before we go to school? Well, Dr. Zawari, in terms of the students, that's the parents' choice. That this, this children, that's their responsibility up to age 18. We are the caregivers, we are not babysitters. So that's the parents' choice and tutor will respect whatever choices the parents make. At this point in time, tutor agrees the body of tutor agrees with a vaccination program. So we agree that any education professional who wants to access the vaccine should be allowed to do so. The laws of Trinidad and Tobago do not at this time have vaccination for COVID as a mandatory requirement for work or for school. And we will abide by that until such a time as the laws change. But even that requires broader consultation rather than simply a mandate from the state we need to look at all the different factors and hear from all the different players in society on that uh, but you do you do you foresee uh, a peaceful um, orderly resolution to this matter provided the ministry of education is willing to engage you properly that would lead to a reopening of schools in september and uh, perhaps the effective management on a school-by-school -school basis. 
Dr. Tiwari, that might be very difficult for me to answer. Today is what day, day, day? 23rd of July? Yes. We might have to wait closer to the, to, to the start to September for me to answer that properly, for Chuto to answer that properly. We don't know what members will say. We have to wait and hear how members feel. Okay, but you, but you, can't, um, you can't be against the opening of schools if you care about the children. I understand the conditions, etc. Oh, 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 we the, no, yeah, but we have the to question, be careful. Let, let me We're finish down that road. Let me finish. Let me finish first, which is that, uh, given the care that you have for the children, um, you want to see the schools open. But the question remains: How do we get to the point where we determine what is required to make that happen well? Is that the issue? I, I like the way you recover and you, I like the comeback that you put the way you rephrase it. Yes, because our teachers have demonstrated care, I mean, throughout the pandemic, pastoral care, funding of students, etc., etc. And I want to remind us, let us bear in mind that school, is it the school we want to reopen or we want the academic year to resume? Because the academic year resumed and it ended in July. Are we going to have the resumption of the academic year in September? Yes, we will. By God's grace, yes, we will. Once we don't have another, you know, unforeseen situation, we will have the resumption. Will we have schools populated? Yeah, the question that's is the how. Question. Yeah, how, how do you that's, resume that's the, question. the academic year? All right, well, thank well, you very much. This has been a very um, and mutually engaging and enlightening discussion. We hope we'll it have you on. It has been a pleasure. Uh, before September to maybe continue the discussion and we will we, look uh, forward to that. we will talk to the Minister of Education as well um, as soon as um, we are able and we would try to engage her and get her perspective and to the extent that we can be conciliatory um, facilitators in this process to get schools um, on track in September we will facilitate that process. Thank you very much it. for and coming. To on the anybody, Dr. Tiwari, we are just wanting the best for everyone. So we are always willing to talk. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Um, thank you.